So you want to use AI inside your business, but you have no idea where to start. The problem isn't that AI can't help, but it's that AI can help with almost anything. And this makes it impossible to know where to start. So I created an easy 10 minute routine that any business owner can apply to their business to cut through that overwhelm. Instead of spending months building the wrong automation, you'll know which automations are worth your time and which automations will waste your time. I've used this exact routine to help dozens of businesses save over six figures annually. And I wanna walk you through it. So let's dive in. Okay, so before we get started, I have table stakes here, expectations of a business owner. So first off, I expect a business owner to know what good looks like when it comes to a process they wanna automate. So there has to be some sort of quality in mind that we can measure against. The next thing is documentation. I expect that process to have documentation and or the business owner to be willing to document it or have somebody on their team document it. And luckily, documentation doesn't have to be painful. So you can use AI in the process to do this. I recommend watching another one of my videos that I already have on my channel for this specific task. All right, so that's table stakes. Let's dive into the actual routine. So this is the 10 minute routine that I recommend people follow. So in this routine, first things first, you're gonna have a list. So this list is gonna be a list of activities you would like to automate. And it's something that should be readily updated on a continuous basis. So this is a living document. The next thing is on that list, you're gonna to wanna to prioritize those items based on three variables that I'll walk you through in a second. So you know where to start and where to focus. And then after you have that prioritized list, then you wanna experiment in small incremental steps because we need to figure out, is this task automatable with AI's intelligence today and its abilities today? So that's where we do small experiments to see if it's actually possible. This is our basic routine, the thing that we're gonna follow. Now, the first question we need to ask ourselves is how do we add items to the list or how do we know when to add an item to a list? And I do this by the rule of three. So if there's a task that you've, do, you've done three times, that is considered a habit or a routine that should be added to the list to be potentially augmented or augment, automated. I tend to stray away from tasks that happen only once, obviously, because that's an ad hoc task that you don't wanna automate. And if it happens twice, that's usually a fluke or it could be uh, a temporary issue. So I usually look for things that happen three times. So three times a day, three times a week, three times a month, three times a quarter. You need to figure out what that reoccurrence is and then you wanna add that item to the list. And this doesn't just have to be the business owner that's making this list. This could be people that are leading teams inside the company or it could be practitioners, the one that are at the front lines doing the tasks themselves. They should have lists as well. And you can aggregate and prioritize those lists and cross kind of pollinate them as well. All right, so that's the rule of three. After we have our list, the question we need to ask ourselves is how are we going to prioritize these items on the list? And there's a simple matrix I like to use when I talk to business owners of thinking about how to prioritize that list in a simple way. There's three variables that are included in this matrix. So first we have risk, how risky is the task? Then we have business impact, and then we have ease of implementation. Let's go through all three one at a time. So with risk, this comes to a task that is likely high value and low volume meaning that it doesn't happen often, but if done incorrectly, there's a huge risk there because there's so much value attached to it. We'll talk through examples of what that is in a second. For ease of implementation, this means how quickly can we get this stood up and running? And also how easy is it to maintain over time? That's ease of implementation. And then finally, we have business impact. So this comes down to two things. One is it could be revenue generated, so a generating task. So if we do this effectively and we automate it, we can increase the number of leads that we reach or something along those lines. Or it could be something that's time saved. So are we saving time that's value attached to that time? And we need to quantify that as well. So it's either time saved or revenue generated. Now with each of these three variables, we can now place our items from our to-do list onto this matrix and figure out where to prioritize first. So when you initially look at this, you'd probably say, okay, we should probably start with the priority zone. I actually recommend people start with the quick wins. And the reason I recommend they start with the quick wins is it increases your confidence in what AI can do. And also it increases your confidence in implementing AI effectively into your business. So the quick wins are going to be low impact items that are easy to do that are low risk. So you have low all across the board and it's gonna be something that provides value and confidence to your team. So that's where I recommend people start. After you've done a few quick wins, then and only then, I'd recommend moving, moving up to the priority zone. So the priority zone is going to be something that's high impact is going to be easy to implement, and ideally it's going to be low to medium risk. This is the sweet spot, and this is where we wanna spend most of our time after we've built the confidence of doing quick wins. After we've done a handful of priority zone tasks and a handful of uh, quick wins, then and, that, then and only then do we move to the strategic side. So this is where we have high impact tasks that are likely very difficult to implement and maybe difficult to operate, but if done correctly, could have a big impact on the business overall. And note that the risk here could be either mid or high. So it's important to be aware of that. And then finally, we have the bottom bottom left, which is the avoid section. So this is the area that we wanna avoid at all costs. Sadly, 
Most business owners may even start here. And when they start here, there's one bad thing that happens, which is they get a bad taste in their mouth oriented towards AI. And they immediately discount the technology and its ability to be applied to their business and their industry. By doing this, they're handcuffing themselves and allowing their competitors to get ahead of them because they've discounted their ability to utilize AI because they've chosen the wrong task to start with. At all costs, try to avoid these types of tasks that are low impact, difficult to implement, and likely high risk as well. Oh, hey, quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me. So below is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. If it's interesting to you, check it out. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, there's different types of offerings below. See if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, let's jump back into the video. Okay, so those are the three vectors we're gonna use for prioritization. Now that we understand this, I wanna give a bit more context to risk. So we've already talked about high value, low volume tasks. That's a good thing to avoid. But the question is why? Why are we avoiding these? Well, the first thing is we want to avoid risking our brand and our client experience when doing different types of tasks in relation to AI. But also by running these risk assessments and understanding how to quantify or identify tasks that are low or high, you'll learn what AI is capable of. And the reason that these are high, medium, and low is based off of the intelligence of AI, its reliability, and its ability to consistently do a task on a recurring basis at the, the quality threshold that you have. And not every task is suitable for AI because the intelligence isn't just there yet and the reliability isn't there yet. And the only way you'll learn this is through trial and error and experience and the taste that comes with that and the intuition that comes with that. I wanna give you two examples of what that could look like. So we have two examples of things you might wanna avoid. Now these two tasks are actually okay to automate some with AI, but the issue that we wanna avoid is the last mile issue. So what do I mean by last mile? Last mile means that you don't want to automate this from end to end with AI. And here's the first example, hiring and firing. So for hiring and firing, it's okay to utilize AI to filter out candidates for the hiring side. And it's okay to use the AI's ability to maybe do a 360 associated to somebody and uh, kind of aggregate that information and derive insights from their performance over time. And that's okay. But when you use AI to then do the actual hiring and the actual firing or making those final decisions, that's not suitable, at least for AI today. So it's important to not allow it to do that last mile piece. Another thing is client closing. So if you have a big deal that you're trying to close with a client, I think it's okay to use AI through the process of understanding the different angles you can negotiate this close on, but not allowing the AI to make that final decision. In the end, you should make the final decision or whoever is the owner of that client relationship should. And keep in mind that this is just for now. So this is the last mile associated to each of these tasks. And the AI isn't there yet when it comes to reliably making these types of decisions and also having enough context in its head to make it in an informed way that a person would. So those are two clear examples to avoid. And as a quick reminder, always measure the ROI of an automation implementation irrelevant of the size. So have a starting point and understanding of what it costs to do that specific task. And then if and when automated, what's the benefit and gain over time? Once you have this, you can then derive some sort of good or bad ROI based off the automation itself. Just a reminder, keep that in mind, don't miss that part. Now that we got that briefly out of the way, I wanna jump into the final stage, which is experimentation. So we have our final part of the routine and the emphasis I wanna put here is small, small experiments. And what does that mean? So say this entire line here is the whole overall process we wanna automate. So this is say one task, so one, one task we wanna automate. Inside of this task, there's likely going to be a segment that's going to be the core part of this automation that AI interacts with and understands and does. And in this core part of the automation, we should pull this out. We pull this part of the automation out and we test that with AI to see if AI can actually do it on a consistent, accurate and reliable fashion. And this is something you can do very quickly in a few minutes for most tasks. So in this case, we pull this task out. After we've picked the task, we pull out the segment, we create a ChatGPT project or cloud project which allows us to create a system prompt and fine tune the AI to that specific task. So increasing our chances of it doing an accurate job, we let it perform that task experiment and then we measure the output against our own quality of what good is. So if we say, okay, it's performing to our expectations, we can move forward with this task and actually try to automate the entire thing. That's the question you wanna ask yourself in the very small experiment uh, process you wanna run. And I'll actually show you what an example of this looks like. I think I have two examples here. So one example we'll start with is PDF processing. So a lot of people have a lot of unstructured data they want to process with AI. So one example of this is taking a bunch of PDFs, running it through AI, having AI extract out all that data and put it into a structured format that you can either put into another system or you can search over. 
Now, depending on how variable these PDFs are, so how complex they could be, the question is, can AI do this consistently? And you can easily test this with many different versions of AI by creating a small project. So it could be a gem inside of Gemini, it could be a GPT project, it could be a cloud project or whatever else. You give it a simple system prompt and say, hey, I want you to extract the text or a specific part of the text from this PDF when I give it to you. So once you've done that, you have your PDF here, you run it through the AI, and then out pops the, the result. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is, is there's this result here? Is this meeting my expectations? Is it pulling it out on a consistent basis? And you want to run multiple iterations of this on a variety of different looking PDFs that are going to be a part of that project. You want to measure overall, this should only take a few minutes, how accurate are the outputs here based on my expectations? And if it meets my expectations, then we can move forward. If not, we don't. And then the other one here is an example for proposal writing. So the same exact process. We already have a bunch of proposals we've written. So we can create a simple project again within GPT, Claude, et cetera. Give it a knowledge base of those proposals. Create a system prompt that's effective so it understands what to do and how to follow it. And then you give it the context for writing a proposal. So you say, here's a contract or whatever I'm trying to engage with a client, help write a proposal for this. And out pops that example. So you then check this example against your existing database of proposals. And after you've checked it against those proposals, you can do this multiple times. I'd say you probably run five to six of these and do a clustering of, of measuring the performance of these. And if they meet your expectations against that database, then you can move forward. But these small test examples are critical because what we're doing is we're taking this small segment of that entire automation that the AI is going to do most of the work on to see if it can perform it. And we're doing this before we automate the entire thing because we don't want to invest and waste money and time on something that's not doable by AI today. And by running these small experiments, we can test that quickly without wasting time. All right. And as a recap, this is our 10 minute routine. So first thing, take two minutes to add different items to your to-do list. So this is your hit list of areas that you would like to automate. And the things that make this list are going to be things that you do more than three times a day, a week, a month, a quarter, etc. And make it easy to add these things. So it could be an Apple note or something like that. It doesn't have to be complex or convoluted. Once you've added these items, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a few minutes, two to three minutes, to prioritize these based off the three variables that I shared. So it's going to be either business impact, ease of implementation, or riskiness. If you want, you could add a high, medium, or low to each of these next to the task that's on the list. So you could uh, kind of do a BER, and you could do low, mid, high, based off of your quick assessment of knowing where to focus your attention. Once you've done that, then and only then do you go to experimentation. So you start at the top of your list and you run these small experiments over five to six minutes to assess the ability of AI to do that task. And remember, we're not trying to automate the entire thing with an AI for these small experiments. We're starting small, we're taking that entire process, pulling out the segment of that process that's AI heavy and asking ourselves, can AI do this on a reliable and a consistent fashion? And that's the 10 minute routine. So as a reminder, one experiment at a time, start small, iterate, and eventually you'll know how to apply AI to your business pretty effectively. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, share it with your friends. And also, like I said previously, below is a link to a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. So if you want 30 insights in your inbox of how to apply AI to your business or your work, check it out. Also, if you'd like to work with me, there's different options below for that as well. And with that being said, there should be a video around here that the YouTube gods think that you'll, uh, you'll appreciate. So you should check that out as well.